perfect. Perfect, perfect. So yes, I yes. Like God. Watching anyway. exactly. So Mrs. Elliot, just wanted to say again, I know how you feel about me thanking you. So I won't thank you for, you know, for what you do, but I will thank you for taking the opportunity to converse with me today under such, you know, strenuous and tough times, you know, with COVID being rampant, most people haven't had the opportunity to go out. And with this lockdown, you know, getting people to converse about any topic is almost in impossible so well it's impossible when things are good yeah, yeah things are bad, they want to talk about covid instead yeah. of talking about the worst the worst virus that has been past present in this country for 300 years sure. sure we don't talk about that virus we talk about covid because it's killing white people mm -hmm. now, it's just killing black people but the majority of people who are being killed are people of color so they're all right with that, but they did, rather it didn't kill quite so many white folks. Oh, so you're saying that's why it's being talked about so much now? Well, of course it is. If we're just black people, we would say, well, that's that's what they get for being born black. They should have known better. Touche. Touche. Yeah. You saw, you saw what was going on in Asia as well, where certain parts of China where they were kicking black people out and putting them on the street and saying the virus ultimately originated with them. Where are they doing this? Well, they, they did some of this stuff in, in certain parts of China, if memory serves me correctly. Oh, uh, yeah. oh, oh, I see. Oh, I see. Uh, well, they've been doing that in so-called white countries mm -hmm. on the face of the earth for years and years, and mm -hmm. for at least 600 years. Right. So, but it's happening now. It's kind of situation normal, all fouled up. Right. Right. There's nothing new. Nothing new. Go on. The reason why ultimately I wanted to reach out to you today, uh, Mrs. Elliot, is because we have two incidents that, that have ultimately transpired in less than a week's time. How ironic that both of them share the 12 for 12, so to speak, situation. Um, if, As you're aware, uh, one was 1,200 miles apart and the other one was separated by 12 hours apart. Uh, the first was the incident that transpired with a young lady by the name of Amy Cooper who was in a park and was ultimately caught by a, an African-American individual for having her dog uncurved um, or not leashed. And as a result, she threatened to call the police and say more or less that this African-American is threatening her and um, making up or falsifying the I read, I read, I read about that. I right. read about that and I've seen it and I, it is totally appalling and it is what we talk about when we say freedom for white people. She is free as a white woman to accuse any male, particularly male of color, of attacking her at the drop of the hat because she knows that history can repeat itself in an instant in this environment. We are. We have now created in this environment something very similar to what it was in the 50s in this country. But you want to remember that Ronald Reagan wanted to take us back to the 50s. Pardon my interjection. For people at home who are not aware of what it was like in the 50s, can you give us a brief synopsis as to what transpired in the 50s for, for black people? Things like Emmett Till transpired in the 50s. Things like lynchings. Things like taking kept catching little girls on the street. Oh, <laughs> mm. Taking them out, group several boys, white males, taking them out, raping them. And I remember the one they threw after they had raped her repeatedly, hung her for a short time, then raped her, then took her out and threw her over the railing of a bridge. That tiny little body into the water below and on a sandbank. And they, she would have died there, but somebody found her and took her home. Now that kind of thing happened regularly in the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. It took someone who... Lyndon Johnson, frankly, even though he was willing to kill Vietnamese, it took him to say no more. And it took Martin Luther King to give up his life to say, no more, this has to stop. And it took a Malcolm X to say, I believe in violence, but then he and Martin Luther King Jr. were getting much closer together. Martin Luther King Jr. was becoming less anti-violent. And Martin Luther and Martin was becoming more anti-violent. Those two were getting together. If they had gotten together, the, this nation considerably, and so they both had to die. This we have a history of killing black people. If they haven't done anything because they're black, <laughs> no, not because they're black. Because we have such ignorance about skin color in the United States of America. 
because we are so ignorant and have been so miseducated where skin color is concerned that we don't realize that there are no white people on the face of the earth, unless some of their parents came from outer space. <laughs> right. If their parents, yeah, if their parents were born on this earth and are citizens of this earth, then they have in their DNA a percentage of black DNA that came from a country in Africa. There are no white people. Facts. There are tan, and there are golden, and there are beige, and there are speckled people like me who have lots of spots of melanin <laughs> here and there. And when I just assumed it would be, if it were all one color, that I wouldn't care what the color was. Right. As long as it was, you know? Right. So, so this whole thing is, there's nothing new about this. That white woman was exercising her white female privilege. Make no mistake about that. And that black man finally had the nerve to say, wait a minute. All I did was ask her to put her dog on a leash. Now, the one that should have been put on the leash was the white woman. Right. We've got the wrong, we've got the leash on the wrong animal. <laughs> right. Because number one, number one, she wasn't white. Her dog was, but she wasn't. Right. She was a pale, she was a pale, faded person whose ancestors came from Africa and who were brilliant enough to, after they evolved in sub-Saharan Africa, travel from the area of the equator and, ed and populate every landmass on the face of the earth without the benefit of any modern technology. How in the devil did they do that unless they were brilliant right. and creative and courageous and positive human beings, we've got to stop talking about racism and start talking about human beings. Right. And we get and racism is just another word for ignorance. Ignorance. This brings me to my next topic, Mrs. Elliot, as well. Uh, the second part of my conversation with you here today is what transpired in um, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, the 46-year-old African-American gentleman by the name of George Floyd um, was murdered as well. I'm not sure if you had the opportunity to see that as well. And Wait a minute. Everybody has been watching that. Okay, good. And my, the people that I know who dared to speak to me are saying, my God, how long will we, we let this go on? But I know people who are saying, there, we got another one. That's one less to worry about. Right. You know that as well as I do. I do. And some of those people are in Minnesota. And a lot of them are in Iowa. And I know that's true because our electoral college members voted for a racist, sexist, ageist, ethnocentric, boy grown tall in the presidency. Now, you cannot deny the racism in your community when your electoral college members have done that. Nor can you deny the racism in this country when that man is still there and when only one member of the Senate voted to impeach him. One member of the, sub, of the Republicans in the Senate, the, the Democrats all did, but only one Republican senator voted to impeach that man. And two of those senators were from Iowa. Mm. And I am embarrassed and ashamed and disgusted and infuriated that they, that only one white male would stand up and say, this man has been wrong consistently. It's the only thing he's consistent about is being wrong. Right, right. But that he has done consistently. And he's been out of that office. What was your question? Well, you answered it pretty valiantly. I was also going to converse with you about the, the murder that just took place as well. You know, there was no discernible reason as to why the police officer put his knee in the back of this young man's neck. I'm, I'm glad you said discernible because there was... A very discernible reason. And the reason is that the pale-faced officer who put that man down and put his knee on that black man's neck is the reason these things are happening. The ignorance of that man is the reason these things are still happening. And the fact that, and be careful because I'm afraid that once that body has been, once they've autopsied it, they're going to try to find a way to prove that he had a physical problem that made him unable to breathe. Right, to encounter. weasel their way out of holding this officer accountable. Absolutely, absolutely. So That's you have to be do. really careful. That's all they do. And you have to, they have to give that body 
to somebody who is an independent right. person to do that autopsy instead of letting a member of the police department or somebody who is paid by the police department or the state government or the city government to do that autopsy and decide why that man died. Why that man died was because of the ignorance of those police officers. And not only them, but the people who were standing around saying, why don't you let him up? That's He's having trouble. Why don't you let him up? Who was it said? The only thing necessary for the perpetuation of evil is for good people to, to do, do nothing. nothing. Now those people around and said, let him up, should have said, somebody should have pulled a gun and said to the police, well, let him up or you're going to be deader than exactly. he is. Exactly. No you want to play this game? Anything. You want to play this game? Let's play this game. But instead, now you have standing on the steps as of the police department yesterday, all these members of probably neo-Nazis right. standing on the steps, heavily armed in downtown Minneapolis to protect the police department. They had no business doing that unless they are members of a government armed militia. Right. They were not members. Sir. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't say in the Second Amendment that everyone has the right to bear arms. You have the right to bear arms as a government militia, a government organized militia. Those guys weren't organized by the government and they weren't a militia. They were a band of neo Nazis and sorry I'm sorry to say it, but rednecks who have some power in their hands because they have a great big gun. Right. Now you don't if that's what you're going to do with that great big gun, is force your wishes, lies, and dreams on the people around you with that gun, then they shouldn't be carrying guns. Right. And those guys, every one of those guys should have been arrested. The every police should have gone, turned, turned around and arrested every one of those men carrying those guns in the middle of Minneapolis because they constituted a threat. That's attempted intimidation. Do not complain about what's happening. To what happened to that black man? Because if you do, we can do it to you. Right. That's what those guns say. Right. And the reason for that is white people are fully aware that within thirty within thirty years they will have less lost their numerical majority in the United States of America. They will be a minority group within thirty years. They're scared to death that when minority they are going to be treated by the majority, which will be people of color, the way white people have treated people of color. They're scared to death. White males are frightened right now. They see the future and they're terribly, terribly intimidated. And they'll go to great lengths. And if you don't believe that, then why do you think? And he said, our so-called president says we're going to have a wall on the southern border of the United States to keep those brown-skinned people out because brown-skinned people reproduce too rapidly. Mm. Now, would you call that racism? Because if it wouldn't, I wonder what you call it. Right. And he has closed down, or caused to be closed down, most of the Planned Parenthood offices because he's quite certain that all they do is for white women. That's not what they do. They do several things for women of all colors. But we're closing them down so that white women won't have so many abortions. You need to realize what's going on. And as far as those officers are concerned, that black man was just another body that need another being that needed to be aborted. Right. And his mother didn't have enough sense to do it when he was born, so we'll do it now. Right. We don't believe in abortion. We good evangelicals don't believe in abortion unless it's a black man or a black baby. Right. And I was asked to address a group of midwives in California last spring, last winter. And I said, why are you asking me? I don't know anything about they each being be delivered. I was delivered at four and five years. I didn't do the delivery. I was just the one carrying. Right. They said, that's not what we want. We want them to come and talk to us because we're all registered nurses who have worked in delivery rooms, and we know that black and brown women aren't treated the same in delivery rooms as white women are. Mm -hmm. And we want to train our women to be midwives so that they don't have to go through that treatment in delivery rooms at the hands of mostly white doctors and nurses. What happened to that man this weekend happened to babies at birth. Black and brown babies at birth. birth. And black and brown mothers go home with not, without that baby in their arms because they were seen as expendable. Right. Yesterday was just a tip of the iceberg. There's already reports, and I don't know how accurate it is or not because I haven't read into it, but they're saying in Minnesota right now there was a 
woman caught on film in a wheelchair stabbing black people as they were shopping. In yes, yes. Somebody called me about that this morning. God, what are they going to do with her? Number one, she's not take away her wheelchair. Right. Yeah. And then take away everything that she has because efforts and the work and the labor of black people, which is her home and her electricity and her medicine and her writing and her religion. We got all of those from people of color. Yeah. No more cotton for her, no more silk, no more rayon, no more handmade, no more of uh, you know, any any fiber that's man-made. None of those things. We would have none of those things if it hadn't been for the contributions of people of color. color. We seem to forget, when we talk about black history, we seem to forget all the contributions that people of color, particularly black people, have made to this world. And I doubt that many of your listeners have read the book, Anthony Browder's book, Nile Valley Contributions, Contributions to Civilization. Uh, have you read it? Yes, I have. You know I have. You, you taught me well. After the well, last time you and I grew I'm up. glad you did because yeah. you would be in trouble right now if you said no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a massive. You my would, next, you my next act film. Test, you get an F. I know yeah. I would get an F from you, Mrs. Elliott, but you know what's crazy? <laughs> my next film is going to be on the Nile Valley contribution. I'm trying to get Master Teacher uh, Anthony Browder on film as well so that way he can give his perspective on uh, ancient Kemet in Egypt as well. So thank you, Mrs. Elliott, for teaching and putting You have on to that. get him on and you have to get the man on. Who wrote The Color of Law? Have right. you read that? Yes, I have. Again, oh, you put my me on. God. When you read that book and you realize that the people who wrote the laws wrote them out of ignorance. Yep. They really believed in the lie of race. Yep. They believed it. And so they legislated it and, and wrote laws and enforced laws because of that ignorance and because of that lie. And as you were saying, I'm going to reach over here right now so people can I see. I actually have it right here after you had told me about it. An amazing book. Uh -huh. One of the best. Isn't that, isn't that something? It's pages 256, maybe. Yeah. Two There's two pages at the end of that book that are just, it says, if we had done this and this and this and this, this kind of segregation wouldn't be in existence. Yep. Absolutely amazing book. Amazing. My, my final question for you, Mrs. Elliot, is this, and I won't take up any more of your time, is you, you, know, we, you and I had conversed about this about a year ago. But looking back at it now, I'm going to ask the exact same thing that I had asked some time back is, would you say that things are worse now than they were in your time? Just to give you some statistics, I had the opportunity to look. Um, according to the, the, the stats that I have, more people were killed in two, black people, let me specify, in 2015 were killed than the worst time of Jim Crow you know, during the lynchings back in 2015. So would you say that now it's almost worse for black people than it was when you were growing up, when racism was at absolutely, all time? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Because at that time, when I was growing up, people were concerned about ending this thing. Since we elected the boy grown tall and put him in the president's residence, and that's the first thing we have to do, is right. change the name of the president's residence from the White House to the president's residence. Right. Since we put that fool in the president's residence, that made it all right to behave in racist, sexist, ageist, homophobic, ethnocentric ways. It made those things all right. If the president says it, why shouldn't I? Right. And that's exactly what's going on. So things are worse now because when you were growing up in the 50s and 60s and 70s, we had leaders who said this racism has to stop. It's ignorance. And it's insane, and it has to stop. Now we have a man who's saying, we don't want to stop this. And if you read the book, When at Times the Mob is Swayed, by Bert Newborn, you will realize that he is basing his political philosophy on the things written by Adolf Hitler. Mm. Now, when he first began to run, and he should have kept on running, but when he first began to run for the presidency, I thought, this sounds Hitlerian. This can't, nobody would elect somebody who would say these things. And then I realized that people younger than I am don't remember the Hitler years. Right. And those who are younger also think it only happened then and only for, you know, from 41 to 45. No, it happened in 1933 and it's still going on and it has gotten worse since the election. It's not the election, the selection of Don Soros T. Rump. Right. We are in worse shape now than we were in the 50s because our so-called leader is Hitlerian. He is as close to an Adolf Hitler 
as I think you will see in your lifetime. And anybody watching this will say, well, she's hysterical. Everybody everybody knows that's not real. Read the book. For, right. the, heaven, for the love of God, before you argue with me about that, and you have every right to argue with me, because you have a right to be wrong. Right. But you, but you need to read that book before you say she's wrong. And then watch it. And watch it. And But there's more there than just being Hitlerian. He also has a mental problem. He's a case of arrested development. And you don't have to be a psychologist or a psychiatrist to recognize that he has never he has never developed an adult ego state. He lives in either his child or his parent ego state. Never acts, walks, talks, or looks like an adult. So that's the problem. Part of the problem is his mental disposition. But we shouldn't have to put up with that for, right. for another four years. And I hope everybody watching this goes to the polls in huge numbers and votes this man out of office. We can't afford four more years of this. You're ultimately saying, Mrs. Elliot, that he's making it socially acceptable for these police officers and people of this magnitude to act in this way. He's not just making it socially acceptable. He's making it expected. When you allow that many men in armor, in military garb, carrying huge weapons on the steps of a local government office and don't send the police up to get rid of them. Right. You are saying it's all right for you to stand here and intimidate intimidate anybody who disagrees with what happened here last night. Right. That's what that's the message that sent. Nobody should have to see those grown so-called grown men with their arms across their bodies and their helmets on intimidating people who would disagree with them. They are not members of an arm of, a, of, of government militia, government organized militia. Right, so they should they all be arrested. Why should even getting away with this? Because they'll get away with it because of the racism in this country right. and the ignorance about skin color. As long as we have a failed education system that allows teachers to enhance the idea of three races or four races and the rightness of whiteness, that's how long they'll get away with it. You have to change the education system in this country if you're going to change the situation. You have another question for me? No, Mrs. Elliott, that pretty much wraps it up. I just wanted to take the time and thank you, Mrs. Elliott, during COVID for taking the opportunity to converse with me today. I truly, truly... Well, truly what, are you going, what are you going to do with this? What are you going to do with this well, ulti material? Ultimately, you know, I think they need to spread the awareness like you and I had talked about. My next venture is to ultimately create, uh, you know, like a comic book and a book to ex to express and educate, you know, the youth as to what's going on so that way we can ultimately teach a new generation um, what's going on and people who are living in this generation who may be ignorant uh, of the truth. Um, so those are my next ventures, and I've been motivated more than ever before, thanks to you know your teachings and the things that I've had the opportunity to read in order to get this message out and to help people or as many people as I I can. But you but you need to know that I know what I know because I have talked to and visited with and listened to and read books written by black people. White people don't know these things. Right. And if I talk to them, I get the same old nonsense about oh, this one. I get this one. I'm not prejudiced, and my best friends are black. Right. From the same person who would say, I don't see color. And I think, oh, my God, do I have time to educate you? Right. And then I take the time. And then that one won't speak to me anymore. Right. Because she has done her bit by claiming that she's willing to be a friend to one of those strange creatures. So we don't just, we don't start with you. When you're a freshman in high school or in college, we start with you before you get to school. So the mindset is there, and you can condition a, part of a kid to be that way. It has, it has nothing to do with your, your conditioning. It has to do with being constantly reinforced in the idea of the rightness of whiteness, which is ridiculous, particularly because there are no white people. Now, you look at my shirt. What color is it? That's white. Then what color is my skin? Not white. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. If I could just get that single thought into people's heads. This is a white shirt. Right. I won't, I won't look white until I'm dead and I'm lying on my back and all my body will sink to the back because of gravity. 
then I'll be quite transit. Mrs. Elliot, it's always a pleasure. Thank you again for going out of your way during amongst COVID to give me your perspectives on this. Um, how long do you think it'll take, Mrs. Elliot, before things ultimately get better? Do you think things will get better out in Minnesota? Um, you know, or do you think that things are just going to get worse as long as people remain ignorant? It's going to depend on what happens in November. Right. If if the citizens of the United States of America aren't smart enough to go in masses to vote by mail or by foot, whatever it takes, to vote against this situation, if they don't do that, he will rig that election. He and his cohorts will rig that election so that we will have four more years of this. And if we have four more years like the last four have been, we will ha we will watch our democracy disappear. Right. This is my fear, that we will lose our democracy. This I don't want to lose. I have uncles and grandparents who fought in the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, World War II, Vietnam, Korea, wrong order, Korea, Vietnam, now in Afghanistan. And we have a man who got a doctor to sign his pad, heel spurs, so he didn't have to go to the military. And that's the man who stands up and salutes the flag, but condemns a black man for saying, I won't salute the flag as long as that anthem is a racist anthem. Exactly. Come on. Yep. What happened to that man yesterday killing him? We've been trying to kill, what, what's his name, the man who refused to salute, to, to stand? Um, uh, uh, Colin. Yeah, you know, Colin. so do I. What? Colin. Colin Kaepernick. That's correct. We have been punishing him for that ever since he did it. But this white police officer, pale-faced police officer, is allowed to kill a black man in front of cameras, and all he gets is fired from that job. And they ultimately have the guy on film, you know, uh, George Floyd saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And over and over and over, over again. Over and over and over again. And, and what really, what really grates me right down to the like, my bottom of my shoes is police, the people who are showing that film say, this is a, before they show it. This is a disturbing film. You might want not want to let your children see it. Black children see that kind of thing all the time in their neighborhood. Exactly. Trying to censor How what the reality is. This is a disturbing film. If we didn't, if we didn't have filming of that, it wouldn't be disturbing at all. Exactly. That would be situation normal. Right. So come on, trying let's stop censor, saying this is disturbing. You might not want to watch this. Then let me tell. Let you tell me how you just how you. In Minneapolis, I knew it happened in Minneapolis, where the young black man was shot in front of his wife sitting in the car. Or Nobody Eric, said this is a disturbing, you may not want to watch it. Or Eric Gardner, back in 2014, the same thing <laughs> happened. Who was, he was, yes. he was strangled out yes. the same way by the police. Exact same thing. Right, right. And it, they showed it, this, you might not want to watch this, this is disturb, disturbing. This is disturbing? One is disturbing? Let's talk about, shall we talk about really disturbing? Shall we talk about those children, those children who are, who don't leave the delivery room? Right. There's no cameras there. And I'm not, I'm not saying that because I've been there and watched it happen. I'm saying that because registered nurses have told me, this is what happens. And in order to put, order to put a stop to this, the only way we can do it, is being midwives, so that we'll be the ones who are delivering babies of all colors. Right. Every baby has the right to live. Right. Mrs. Elliott, thank you again for your time. It's a serious work. We got I got work to do after this in order to try to, you know, get the message out and to try to, you know, expose as many people as possible to this so that way we can protect the new generation of people. So thank you again, Mrs. Elliott, for taking the time to converse with me. Can't thank you enough. Okay. For but remember, in the future... Don't describe the police as the people that you can depend on to protect you. Black males can't depend on the police to protect them. And don't you expect them to. Who can they? Because they are trained not to. Not to protect they are trained you. To, they are trained to suspect you. 
They are trained to stop you. They are trained to abuse you. And if necessary, to destroy you. Thank you.